Harbour traffic helicopter 744 Hotel Sierras at the Long Beach International Gateway Bridge, south westbound through the port, 800 feet harbour traffic. Get rid of that ambiguity, clarity, brevity, accuracy, fundamentals of what we do. Get those things right, you know, and, and you'll, you'll be fine. Hi guys, it's Alex Chaunt with Anthelion Helicopters. Welcome back to part two of our radio communication video. We're going to pick up today where we left off and cover the rest of the journey for you guys. Hope you guys enjoy it. Have fun up there. Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierras at the Long Beach International Gateway Bridge, southwest bound through the port, 800 feet harbor traffic. Okay, so now that we've traveled on our merry way through our uncontrolled environment and we've, we've got pretty good at doing position reports over the harbor. We've talked about, we've gone over the red cranes and we've gone over pier 300, gone over pier 400. We want to actually transition through uh, an airspace, a controlled airspace. Now, you know, transitions are again an important part of the flying that you'll do, especially here in LA when we've got a, about a million and one different airspaces. A lot of the times you don't want to land there, you just want to get through it. Either you're trying to be efficient um, or you're trying to get somewhere else, but either way, you need to transition an airspace. So pretty simple when you're doing it. Um, you don't need to listen to an ATIS prior to transitioning an airspace. The tower's responsibility is always to give you the, uh, the, 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 the field's altimeter setting at that point for you to put in. So all you need to tell them is essentially, again, you know, it's the same as, well, same as before. You know, who are you talking to? Well, this case is Torrance Tower. Torrance Tower, good morning, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierras. Just a mile to the uh, east of the uh, Vincent Thomas Bridge, requesting a westbound transition. Uh, it's 800 feet. Helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra, Torrance Tower, please request it. Torrance altimeter 29904. 29904, thanks, please requested for Hotel Sierra. Who am I? I'm helicopter November 744, Hotel Sierra. Where am I? I'm half a mile uh, to the uh, east of the Vincent Thomas Bridge. What do I want? I want to transition uh, the tip of your airspace directly westbound, clearing over Palos Verdes at 800 feet. Right. So it's, it's kind of the same format, uh, really. There you, again, you're not. You, what you want is a transition. It's not a landing clearance at this point. So uh, apart from that, and repeating back the ATIS is, it's, it's pretty similar. So in our case, which we just, took, which we you'll see on the video, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Torrance Tower, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra, uh, one mile to the east or half a mile east of the Vincent Thomas Bridge, requesting westbound transition, 800 feet. Torrance Tower, good morning, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierras, just a mile to the uh, east of the uh, Vincent Thomas Bridge, requesting westbound transition, uh, it's 800 feet. Helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra, Torrance Tower, please request it, Torrance Altimeter 29904. Thanks, proof requested for Hotel Sierra. And then Torrance will come back on and say, yeah, helicopter 744 to Sierra. Either, either they'll say um, ident if they don't actually see you on, on, on the radar, for, and then you'll press your ident button on your transponder, and then you'll little, they'll have a little bloom on their screen and they'll, they'll confirm where you are. But most of the time, they'll just say transition approved, um, you know, here's your altimeter setting, whatever it is. Sometimes if they're busy airspaces like LAX uh, or Hawthorne going into LAX uh, or Class Charlie's, they'll give you a squawk code as well. Uh, a squawk code is just a code on the transponder, transmitter, responder, the little box usually right at the bottom below the radio, for you to put in a discrete code so that they know exactly what you're up to, what kind of aircraft you are, what you're doing and where you're going. Uh, and it's more easily identifiable to them. If that happens, don't panic. You just have to do it, and you have to read back the squawk. So in the case of LAX, they'll say all, all of the above. If we want to do something like a north shoreline transition below 150 feet, they'll say in November 744 Hotel Sierra, transition approved below 150 feet, squawk 2649. So my repeat back, because it is a clearance, it's not only you know transition is approved below 150 feet northbound along the shoreline, but it's also squawking 2649. I have to repeat back the squawk, so again, they know that you put in the right numbers and that you're gonna appear on their screen in the right denomination of numbers so they, they're not confused about who you are and where you are. So again, you know, squawks get used in a busier environment, always get used in a, uh, an IFR uh, instrument environment, which we'll get into later on, but they can get used in a VFR environment around busy airspaces, you know, Clash Charlies and Clash Bravos, 
very rarely into a uh, into a into a delta and usually once you've gone through that airspace they'll tell you to squawk VFR again they'll tell you to essentially get rid of that squawk and go back to one two zero zero on your transponder which means that you're just a VFR now you're not on a discrete code anymore so again once you once they tell you that just repeat back to them I've, you know that's what you're doing all right that's transitions right so we'll just transition through here uh Go back to Long Beach. One little thing that uh, we need to we need to quickly talk about is requesting frequency changes when you're exiting airspace. Now, this is a, a solid convention to do. Um, not only does it tell the tower that you are outside their airspace and they can let go of you and go on to all of the other aircraft around, it enables you to change frequencies as well at the same time. Uh, you know, in certain airspaces, the more controlled ones like Bravo's, you absolutely must have uh, a frequency change to you know approval to do so in a delta you don't strictly need so need to because it's less busy and less critical however it is good convention to do so and the controller it will help the controllers and it quite frankly will help your relationship with the controllers as well by making their, li their life a little bit easier uh, and like you see in the video all you really need to tell them is you know where you are and that what you're requesting so in our case coming out of, of Long Beach Long Beach Tower, Helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra, clear to the uh, southwest requesting a frequency change. And then they'll come back to you and say, for Hotel Sierra, frequency change approved. And you're good. You can, you can do it. Um, again, it's, it's a little thing. It's almost a small thing, but it does help. Uh, and anything we can do to enhance safety, make everyone's life a bit easier, have good etiquette uh, in, in the air it, it is useful. And certainly frequency changes, whether you're transitioning, whether you're departing, and airspace are important to do. Long Beach Tower Road, afternoon, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra is back with you approaching the Queen Mary for a South Redondo arrival, Atlantic Atlantic with Gulf. Helicopter 744, to see Long Beach Tower, report the tank farm ident. Report the tank farm and ident, 744, Hotel Sierra. Arrivals into controlled airsport. So we were, after we've been flitting around the harbour now, we're ready to come back to good old Long Beach and uh, go for a cup of tea. So first of all, you know, you guys know, before you get anywhere close, stop and think about what you're doing. You, you guys always, always, always do your research on the arrival and departure procedures for an airport that you're going to. If, you, if any of you guys have flown around LA, you know that most of the airports around here have very specific arrival and departure procedures, and they're all published. And it is usually for things like noise abatement and flying friendly over the over neighborhoods, you know, uh, and also so to control the flow of helicopter traffic versus the flow of fixed wing traffic so that sequencing and separation from helicopter to fixed wing can happen safely and uh, efficiently. Don't go into anywhere unless you really, really have to, unless you actually know where you're going and what the procedures are. Um, of course, that's not always possible. But certainly around your home area, do the research, know what the procedures are. Don't just bomb in there at any old angle because you're liable to get up everyone's nose and cause a whole amount of problems uh, in the best sense of the word. In the worst sense of the word, you're going to get into a, potentially a conflict with other aircraft at that point. Um, and, and that would not be a good thing, uh, let alone fly over people's neighborhoods at the wrong altitudes. Speaking of altitudes, always, always, again, know the altitudes that you're supposed to be flying into airports at. Typically, in deltas and most Charlies for helicopters, the outer parts are 700 feet AGL, coming to 500 feet AGL for the traffic patterns. Um, again, 500 feet AGL is, is on purpose when you're close in, so that fixed wing traffic, which is a typically a 1,000 feet AGL, then that gives you 500 feet of separation from fixed wing traffic for avoidance, and, uh, which is super important. So again, Know your altitudes, know the elevation of where you're going into so that you're at the correct altitude. Uh, not strictly radio communication, but it's good practice and this all sort of comes together. Do your research. Right, here we are trundling in. Before we get anywhere close to the outside of that airspace, you should have listened to the ATIS. Right? I've seen it time and time again where lazy pilots can't be bothered to listen to the ATIS and they either just make it up or just ignore it. And sometimes the controllers let them off, sometimes they don't. It's not good practice. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, make sure that you listen to the ATIS 
well in advance of you arriving at the airport so you know the current conditions of that airport. You know, best case scenario, you can still trundle in and the towel will relent and give you the current altimeter settings and what have you and different things that are runways in use. However, you know, you might find out that you've been calling one of the frequencies that's not actually active at that time because you didn't listen to the ATIS and they're only using one frequency or they've switched frequencies, things like that. So, so make sure you have this information and make sure you remember that phonetic alphabet number. If you're bad at remembering like me, write it down. If you've got your, you know, with you, your kneeboard with you, if you really need to do that, but therefore listen to it. Know your reporting point on the way in. Know where the edge of the airspace is. Don't call right on the edge of the airspace because guess what? If they don't respond to you straight away and you keep trundling in, you've just violated the airspace at that point. Right? Give yourself a bit of time for the controller to get back, especially if you're listening on the radio and it sounds busy. Right? You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to give yourself a bit of time to set up um, and allow the controller the time he needs to get back to you as well. Now, what constitutes two-way radio communication, which you need to get into most controlled airspaces, right? It is the tail number getting read back to you by the controller. If a controller says to you, you know, I say to, let's just say, I say to Long Beach Airport, Long Beach Airport, helicopter 744 Hotel Sierra, uh, one mile to the west of the Queen Mary, requesting South Redondo uh, arrival, landing Atlantic with information Sierra, Road, afternoon, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra's back with you approaching the Queen Mary for a South Redondo arrival, Atlantic Atlantic. And the controller comes back to me and says, helicopter south of the field, stand by. I do not have permission to enter that airspace. I must remain clear, right? Do not assume just because the controller has got back to you that you think, you know, he's, he's talking to you. You have not had two-way communication established because your tail number has not got repeated back. You do not have permission to enter that airspace. A controller can always be more specific and say, a helicopter, whole, a helicopter south of the, um, or aircraft south of the airspace remain clear of the class delta. Then you must, you know, you can repeat back being clear of the class delta and obviously he's told you to stay clear. But if he just says stand by, again, you have not had your tail number read back to you. If he says your tail number back to you and says 74 for Hotel Sierra, stand by. Strictly, that's two-way radio communication established. You can keep on going on your merry way. Would I? Uh, I don't know if I would. I would, again, I would be far happier and, and, and in my own mind about knowing exactly that the tower knows exactly what I want and what I want to do before I really go in. I'd probably still do uh, a couple of orbits just to, just to buy myself some time. But strictly, two-way radio communication has been established you could keep going. So again, back to our convention on what we do, it's also the same as when we're taking off. So in this sense, who are we talking to? Long Beach Tower. Who are we? Helicopter 744 Hotel Sierra. Where are we? We're at the Queen Mary, or in this, or in this case, we'll be you know, half a mile to the uh, west of the Queen Mary. What do I want? I want a South Redondo arrival, landing Atlantic with ATIS Sierra, we'll say at this point, it may not be Sierra, but, but that's the convention. Again, very, very structured, very regimented. It will never deviate from there. You know, it is the same with the departure, same with the transition, same with an arrival. Always, that's, always that situation. Again, who are you talking to? Who are you? Where are you? What do you want? Give the ATIS, as you hear right now. Tower Road, afternoon, helicopter 744, Hotel Sierra is back with you approaching the Queen Mary for a South Redondo arrival, Atlantic Atlantic with Gulf. Helicopter 744, to see Long Beach Tower, report the tank farm, I dead. Report the tank farm and I dead, 744, Hotel Sierra. Depending on what happens, this is when you might need to be a bit patient. If the control tower is busy, you might have to wait. If the control tower has changed its frequencies, you might have to acknowledge that frequencies, frequency change. So. You might, the ATIS might say for Long Beach, for example, you know, um, on the ATIS, all arrivals and departures, 119.4. However, when you get there, and for whatever reason, if you're coming from the north, they might have done a radio, sp uh, a frequency split and have 120.5 as well operating. If that happens and the control tower says, contact tower 120.5, don't freak out. It's not the end of the world, right? You know, it, it really isn't. Again, a lot of this is, you can always go around in a circle and just wait. 
before doing anything, if you want to. There's, there's no harm in doing that. If you need to just wait and gather yourself, remember, aviate, navigate, communicate. Aviate first, keep yourself in a nice safe circle while you're figuring all this stuff out. If they tell you to do a frequency switch, that's fine. You know, at, at that point, you, I just go back to the tower and say, affirmative, 120.5, for Hotel Sierra. I'll go down, hopefully I had already had a preset, put in 120.5 now, click on the use, or uh, the active side now on, on your radio, then you go to the radio again. Here we go, Long Beach Tower, helicopter 744 Hotel Sierras, with you 120.5, back into the convention again. Where am I? What do I want? Right? There's no need to panic with any of this stuff. It's all very regimented, even if they throw frequency changes. Remember, the control tower and the controlling agency wants to help you as well. What they don't want is someone who's errant and all over the place. It's their job to help you, but you have to help them at the same time. Uh, and so remember those conventions. Remember what they can throw at you at the same time. You know, again, read back landing clearances. So usually what they'll say at Long Beach here is once, they, once you've asked for that and they've said 744 Hotel Sierra, South Redonda approved, report the tank farm. That's the barrier in Long Beach between the three mile and the, and the outer loop, outer part of the class delta and the inner part of the class delta when you get down to 500 feet from 700 feet, where they tend to control things even more. And that's the way you step down. So and on the south side of Long Beach, it's the tank farm. So, and you'll just say, you'll re repeat back, South Redonda approved, report the tank from 744 Hotel Sierra. That's reading back the clearance. Report the tank farm on IDEP 744 Hotel Sierra. As you get closer to the airport, either the tower will come back on, preempt you and say, 744 Hotel Sierra, permission to land, Atlantic Aviation, cross 26 right uh, or 26 left at 500 feet, whatever they say. Um, you have to read back if it's a clearance. If it's, they're giving you permission to land or clear to land, repeat it back. If they're telling you to cross an active runway at 500 feet, repeat that back as well. Cross an active runway at 500 feet. If you're trying to go direct somewhere um, because it's quicker and more efficient and they give you permission, again, repeat it back. Direct approved, 744 Hotel Sierra. Confirm direct approved, 744 Hotel Sierra. Don't have ambiguity with radio communication. This sort of Chinese whispers between sender and receiver, in your case, tower and you, cannot exist. Confusion it was, is what causes accidents in the air. And if you are in doubt, ask them to clarify. You can always say, say again, 74 for Hotel Sierra. Could you please confirm, 74 for Hotel Sierra. Could you please repeat the last transmission, 74 for Hotel Sierra. All of these things you can ask the tower to get clarification. Do not, do not wander around not sure about what you are doing and what there is to say and what you've understood. Always, always, always ask for clarification so you are clear in your own mind. That's why you repeat things back. Tower sometimes makes mistakes as well. You might get something re repeated back to you that is different than what you asked for. Again, just go and clarify it. I've had that a number of times recently where I've had to go back to the tower either to clarify my tail number or clarify what I wanted to do. They've told me to land at a different place when I requested. Clarify it. They've given a last different, uh, last number of my, my tail number. Clarify it. They've given a different approach that I'm actually doing. I'm actually at the north and they're on the south. Clarify it. Again, ambiguity is the enemy to all aviation, right? And especially in communication. Get rid of that ambiguity, clarity, brevity, accuracy, fundamentals of what we do. Get those things right. Ask questions. Con treat the control tower as your friend, not as your enemy. You know, and, and you'll, you'll be fine. Um, stick to the conventions, do your research on where you're going, take a breath, don't rush it. Uh, always, you can always, if you've got fuel, stay outside the airspace till you've figured it out. You can always take a breath on the ground. You know, listen to the, listen to on the live ATCs, practice, practice, practice. Remember those conventions though, and you will get through it. Helicopter 4 to Sierra, Tessa Jubin Atlantic, through to land. We're to land Atlantic, simple photos here. I know that's a lot of a mouthful. I know it's a lot, um, but I hope it's all been of help. So really what we've tried to do today is go through some of the basics. There is an infinite more amount that we could actually cover here. I'm not even talking about the IFR side of things, which is a whole world unto itself. 
Um, you know, today has been a mixture of sort of hints and tips, as well as conventions on what to do, what not to do. We've covered departing a controlled airspace. We've covered arriving at a controlled airspace. We've covered transitioning a controlled airspace. We've covered position reporting outside of a controlled air airspace. We haven't controlled landing and departing from uncontrolled airports, but that actually would be a separate lesson on uncontrolled airports in general um, when we talk about you know that whole the whole sort of different world as it were. And but that's too much for today. Um, we've talked about the, ac the the importance of accuracy and brevity in all of your radio communications that you do. We've talked about you know, get clarification from the towers. Don't don't uh, go around with ambiguity. Don't go around with confusion or uncertainty. That will get you in a hill heap of trouble. At the very least, it will get you a reprimand. At the very worst, it could get you a crash or a mid-air collision um, or uh, something like that. So, so I always, always, always ask for clarification if you don't understand. Learn those conventions. You know, they never change. They're always going to be the same. Learn, 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 and if you get those right, you will always be able to talk to a tower or anywhere else and always in the same format and everyone else will know where you are at the same time. So just take your time, take a breath, do your research, know your phonetic alphabet, know the conventions, and, uh, and you should get by just fine. It, it, it won't happen overnight. You know, it, it takes years to get good at this stuff, but if you work at it, if you are diligent about it, if you, I call it, leave the ego at the front door and don't get scared by it and just immerse yourself in it, you will get there. Just be patient with yourself. Uh, stay safe out there. Um, please let me know any questions or in the comments that you have about radio communications, but hopefully you, you, know, you guys have learned some of the basics and uh, have got some little hints and tips along the way. Um, stay safe, fly safe, and look forward to seeing you guys next time.